Welcome back to another episode from the Optimal Body Podcast. I'm Doc Jen. And I'm Dr. Dom. And today we are talking all on sciatica. So that thing that's usually associated with that low back pain, but usually has those symptoms that go down the leg and don't feel so good. We're going to talk about why that is, what it is, and what you can do about it today. I think this term gets thrown around a lot and it's mm-hmm. it's common because it's a sensation down the leg, you know, so we're going to go into differential diagnosis, meaning different diagnoses that can actually be associated and feel the same, mm-hmm. but actually are not for the same reason. And, you know, just talk about how this whole spectrum of sciatica can kind of feel and how it works within the body. So sciatica is really just that irritation at that nerve and, and it, it has to come from the spine. So anywhere from L4 down to S1, you know, Mm -hmm. there's some nerve irritation happening from that nerve root and it's getting down the leg. And that's where we want to really talk into, you know, what could be causing it and what you can start to do about it. Because I think there's a lot of beliefs out there. Oh yeah. (laughs) So we want to try to ease your mind and give you confidence in what you can do moving forward. So it's typically people are feeling it along the side of the thigh, the back of the thigh, but sometimes it could even go along the front of the thigh and it could go past the knee. And so we wanna talk about like, what are those different sensations? And it's just when you're having more of that ridiculous pain that is usually associated mm-hmm. more with like the sciatica, that's a, it's a type of radiculopathy. We're still feeling some sensation Mm -hmm. of that nerve pathway right and so and it's only when it gets tested by a clinician that we really start to distinguish these different types of that spectrum of radiculopathy because it could be sensory issues so like Mm. if we lightly touch on one side it might feel different than the other side or we do different tests and everything and that's where we talk about peripheralization versus centralization we want to define that for you as well Basically, all that means is, is it going down the leg further or or progressing in pain and weakness and sensory sensations that you're feeling or maybe you're working with a therapist mm-hmm. and, and these sensations that they're reporting are actually getting a little worse. And usually it's like, well, it started in my butt. Now it's in, down to my thigh. Now it's down to my calf. Like if it continues mm-hmm. to kind of move that way rather after weeks right after weeks of working on this and you're working with the therapist and you're trying to get better and it continues down that pathway then that's when we want to say okay maybe getting an image at this point is something that i should be looking into but if it is something where it's already been in the calf but it's getting now it's in the thigh and it's kind of burning in my thigh but i don't really feel it in the calf anymore yeah. And then it's going into my glute and it's kind of really irritated at my glute, but I don't feel it in my thigh anymore. Those are, that means it's centralized. It's coming back to the source place in the spine and it's getting better. Essentially, the nerve is being sensitized. Okay. It's, it's any like, it's, all, it's an emotion that we feel almost. That if we feel an emotion, we're feeling sensitive to that emotion mm-hmm. and we need to create an environment that allows us to feel a different a different way and it's literally the same for the nerve it is what we believe about that nerve right is that it's being smashed it's being compressed it's being there's some kind of mechanical force on that nerve and i need something that's going to release that mechanical force that's typically what we think of sciatica and that's not necessarily the case other different ones are just again trauma yeah, trauma. Because we can get exactly. in a car accident. I mean, it's that. all kind of trauma to an area. It's just any kind of trauma that we have in our body yeah. and our nerve is now responding to that. However, we also have to look at the flip side, which is always what we go back to where we've done the episode on disc herniation before. So you can mm-hmm. go back and listen to that one. But we also talked about how we see people who have, have in, images of a disc herniation Mm -hmm. and a disruption of that area and yet they have no symptoms they have nothing going down the leg they have no sciatica and they have no pain and so we cannot just say a disc herniation is for sure going to cause sciatica or my sciatica is for sure caused from a disc herniation no unfortunately we cannot say that typically when you're feeling sensations of sciatica 
and we might be able to infer or correlate it yeah. with a disc herniation is if you the pain increases when you cough, when you sneeze, when you bend over rapidly. Sometimes we can infer, but again, without an image, without knowing directly, and it still doesn't mean that we have to have that herniation completely go away for the pain no. and the sensation down the leg to go away. That doesn't even come from the spine, you no. know? And so that's where we have to just say, okay, there's some kind of sensation coming down my my body. Why is this happening? And there's just not one size fits all. We can't just say, okay, we're gonna go and we're gonna do some extension of the spine. And because I'm addressing the spine and that's where sciatica comes from, it's going to help relieve the pain. It may, it may not. And the other thing that I like to say too with sciatica and honestly with any kind of nerve irritation, if you are feeling symptoms that are shooting down, that are painful, that are kind of going down an area, my programs don't even necessarily go into nerve pain or anything because it is a little bit more delicate and it it is sensitized. It's something that's so sensitive. And so we want to create good environments, not just push into it even more. And sometimes if we do some of the exercises that are for nerve pain, when we're experiencing the nerve pain, we could be making it worse if your body's not ready for that. And so that's where going to see someone who specializes in what is called neurodynamics mm -hmm. is so important because sometimes even we might be feeling it down one side of the leg, but we might need to do exercises for that nerve on the other side because they're all connected into the same area in the spine. It's like a big spider web. If we start moving our right leg, we're going to tug on that spider web to the point where the left will probably get some tension tugging through it. If that's super sensitive, all we might need to do is kick our right leg straight and we can feel the stretching or the reactiveness through that left leg. But that might be where our tolerance is at. And I don't mean to like scare anyone too. Like I don't want you to think like, oh, I, sh I can't do these nerve exercises because you said it could be worse. I want to be very careful with my language because yes, although nerves are more delicate, you don't have to be so afraid. So if you are feeling new sensations down the leg, but you're not experiencing any weakness, muscle weakness, anything yeah. like that, you don't have to stop movement. You can still move within what your body allows. So as long as you're not increasing pain or increasing symptoms, don't be afraid to work out. Don't be afraid to exercise. And I think that's the biggest thing that you know, a lot of patients are so afraid of is that there's this direct force on my nerve and so I can't work out and that's not what we're trying to say. How is it that you can modify your environment for right now just so that you can start to make and allow the body to feel something different? And I think that's the that's the biggest thing is that you might think, oh, I'm, I'm doing this therapy thing and it's not working for me. Well, you have to take in consideration are you sleeping? Are you getting water? Are you getting nutrients? Are we are we addressing the inflammation that's around the nerve? Are we addressing say, sitting all day? Have we talked about breath work yet? <laughs> you know, like <laughs> well, breath work helps everything, as you guys know. <laughs> so if you address some of the things Jen just talked about and also once a day lay on your back and get some nice deep long breaths in, like that systemically from our brain down is gonna calm our nervous system down. It's gonna make that man a little less grumpy. It's gonna bring our nerves resting level to a little more comfortable place. So if you also start throwing in some of the systemic things that we always talk about, that can support your system for sure. Just a quick example of that. Like when I had a client, this is more of an upper extremity ridic radiculopathy that was happening. However, when we actually addressed, you know, how much processed stuff he was putting in his body and just starting to change out some things. Like obviously I'm not a dietitian, but it's like mm, maybe instead of soda every day, we could do a soda water every once in a while. Mm. You know, and we just started to address what is happening in the environment that we can just start to do little changes. And I 100% guarantee that that along with some of the exercises to decrease the sensation around it made a world of a difference. And he was able to, you know, only see me a few times and felt better. Well, there you have it. Some of the ins and outs of sciatica, that nasty little back pain that will go down the leg. Hopefully you've learned a few things on how you can explore that yourself. If you have any questions, comment below, subscribe, let us know what you want to learn because we got plenty of more PT pearls to come.